Hey everybody, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome to Train Sim World 2, let's get some doors open here, there we go, doors are open, okay cool, let's get some people loaded up, uh, and while we're waiting we'll get some lights turned on, we will get this, is that on or off, that's off, we'll keep that off, confirm that our parking brake is off, lounge window opaque control on, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds cool, a little AC going for the good people. And I think that's just about everything up here. Yep. And I'm going to leave LZB PZB off for now. It's a different system on this train. Uh, and by the way, this is the BR406 ICE 3MDB. It looks like that. Beautiful. So LZB is, uh, I guess, the easiest way to describe it. LZB would be a speed limit system, an automatic braking system based on speed where if you're exceeding a certain speed when you pass a certain signal, the train brakes will automatically apply. PZB is slightly different in that it will anticipate the speed that you need to be traveling, and you can manually slow the train down. There'll, there'll be a little bug around the outside of the speedometer. There's a little red pip, and it'll be moving. Right? As you get closer to a curve or as you get closer to a reduced speed zone, that pip will be decreasing. So as long as you manually brake and keep your actual speed lower than that pip, then you will be at the speed you need to be at when either you get to the curve or you get to that reduced speed zone or, or whatever. So that's PZB. And then the other one is uh, CIFA, which is just the timing, the timing system where you have to reset it or touch your control, lock the doors. Uh, on a US train, you just need to use any control, operate any control. On a German train, you need to manually reset that timer. Okay, so we are in Cologne, we're going to Aachen. 64 kilometers, confirmed brakes are off. And here we go. Here we go, there we go. All right, we're rolling. And as we get out of the station here, I'm going to turn around and look behind us and see if we can see the cathedral. It's Cologne, so of course, you've got to see the cathedral. That's like the famous thing. It's not it right there, is it? No, I think it's... I want to say it's behind us and to the left. But we'll take a look here. And I'm also... I'm going to try to be on time, but I'm not super worried about that. I'm focused more on uh, just letting you see what the sim is all about, what it looks like. We'll talk a little bit about it. And I'm going to try to keep it positive. I always try to keep it positive. That works sometimes. There's the cathedral. Hell yeah, man. I love it. All right, so let's hop back in here. Train Sim World 2. <sighs> Where to begin? Where to begin? What do you get? Well, you get three routes. You get this route that we're in right now, which is 65 kilometers. And as far as I know, there are no... I mean, it's a bullet train, so there are no stops in between. You just go end to end. And it, as we get further into the, the episode, I'll tell you a little bit about my thoughts on bullet trains in train sim. But you do get this route, and you do get this train. And you can also run the, uh, is it the DBBR Talent? Oh, it's a, like a commuter style loco train set that you can run on this route as well. Not at this speed, actually. Now, that one may have intermediate stops. I haven't driven that yet because I wanted to hop in this in this new one, first opportunity I've had to drive anything like this, but there may be uh, there may be some intermediate stops with that other one. I'll have to look into that. So you get that. You also get the Bakerloo line on the London Underground. And that is now that's a, a 1972 vintage loco, but I believe the route is meant to represent today, modern era. As far as the stations and everything, the, the way that they are decorated and, you know, I don't know if it's a, oh, like some of the DLC have kind of a heritage feel to them. I don't know if that's the case with Bakerloo. I think it may be contemporary with just older rolling stock. You get that. And you also get a, I guess, like a re, redone, repolished version of Sandpatch, which is the original route from CSX Heavy Hall. Before TSW 2020 was TSW 2020, it was, oh, well, it was just called TSW, and before that it was just CSX Heavy Hall. So you get that route as well, and it's been 
cleaned up a little bit. They say, they say. Now your DLC do port over from TSW 2020 to TSW2, but not all of them. And I have to say, they weren't very clear about that. They made it sound like they would all be available. I think there's five, maybe, or six that came through. Like Peninsula Corridor came through. Uh, Brighton came through. One of the German routes came through. Sound about right? Yeah. So they're all coming over other than Northeast Corridor. And nobody knows why. It could be licensing with Amtrak. It could be that it's just so broken that it can't be fixed. Because that is... Northeast Corridor is one of the original... DLC and it's probably the one with the most problems. So we got that. Uh, what What's different? What's new? It's running on Unreal 4.23 and TSW 2020 was running on Unreal 4.16. We are in ultra settings right now and we're capped at 60 FPS and we are bouncing back and forth between 60 and 61 FPS and what that tells me is my GPU and my CPU, neither one are maxed out right now. We're not maxed out on RAM or memory. We got a little bit, we got a little bit left in the tank. So these settings, ultra settings, are not taxing my system and forcing it to run slowly. We're not bottlenecked or anything like that. And I have to say, I'm not really impressed with the way the game looks. You can still see the draw distance on the tracks right in front of us. That is, I don't know, man. I was expecting better than that. I really was. We got a new skybox. Let's hop outside and take a look at it. I mean, how are you feeling about that skybox? Uh, it just looks like sky, you know? It just looks like sky to me. I don't see any real differences there. Now, in Sandpatch, I have to say, because I hopped in there, I thought that would be a good, a good opportunity to compare visually. I did hop in Sandpatch, and that's running a little bit faster. I used to go back and forth between like 40 to 50 FPS when I was out in the woods, sometimes down to like 20 or 25 FPS when I was in a yard. All of that seems to be about plus 10 FPS, but it, I think it looks really, really bad. I feel like their idea of optimizing was to just potato at least that route. I haven't been on any other DLC, but I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not, not super impressed there. There's supposed to be new physics. And new traction. I haven't really noticed any difference there. Essentially, if some trickster gremlin had swapped these two sims out for me whilst I was asleep and I woke up and fired up this sim, I would have no idea that I was in Train Sim World 2. This looks, feels, and sounds like Train Sim World 2020. It does not, I mean, the HUD is a little different, some of the menus are a little different. But it, it, there's no difference. There really is no difference. And I guess that leads to. <laughs> the negativity that I'm really trying to avoid in all episodes, but, but in this episode as well. I don't want to be negative, but I, I don't, hmm, I, I really don't feel good about this. I had said that I wasn't going to get this game. I'd said that over and over, but they offered me a, a loyalty discount, which I think came to $1.50. I may have been reading that wrong, but I <laughs> I want to say my loyalty discount was $1.50. Well, when you put it like that, who could refuse? And I was also curious, and Microsoft Flight Sim came out earlier this week. So why not? Why not? So I did pre-order. Now I got 10% for pre-ordering, so I think this cost me about 25 bucks. And essentially I got two new routes. I don't, as I said, I don't see, hear, or feel any difference in the sim. I just got two new routes. All right, that's cool. But what I also got was uh, Train Sim World 2020 is abandonware now. It's closed out. And everything that's broken or flawed or missing is that's locked in. That's never going to be fixed. And instead we have Train Sim World 2 now and we're getting a lot of promises. So things like, you know, all the DLC are going to be ported over. But I don't know if they're going to be fixed as they're ported over because a lot of those DLC have problems as well. Something like you know, rapid transit with the signaling. It's all messed up. Never really got fixed. Is that going to be fixed before it's ported over? It'd be great if it was. But I suspect all they're going to do is, is make it compatible with Unreal 4.23 and not really fix or change anything in the DLC itself. I mean, we got... Here's a good example. We got a livery editor, right, in TSW2. We got a livery editor. And it is, 
without being unkind, it's, it's a bit of a joke. It's obviously an afterthought. You can change the color of the paint on the Locos and Rolling Stock. However, you can't put in a color code or a hexadecimal. There's just a slider, which means that if you want to have the same color on a Loco and a piece of Rolling Stock, you have to just essentially guess what that color is. There's no way, at least that I found, there's no way to like lock that color in and use exactly the same color for all your liveries. That's messed up. In 2020, that's messed up. You can put some stickers on, some safety stickers, and there is uh, text, one font, one, one single font. So essentially you can paint an entire loco or piece of rolling stock a single color, and then you can put a word on the side in one font. And I have to say, that is an insult. It would be better. It would have been better if you gave me nothing at all. That really is. That's ridiculous in 2020. Want to see how it's done? Look to look to the east. Look to SCS and the truck sims. Look to iRacing. All you need to do as a developer is generate an accurate set of templates, make them available to the community, and make a way that the community can create image files that can then be imported and draped over your wireframes. That's all there is to it. And people would create magnificent skins as they do in truck sim and iRacing. So I don't think you're going to see really any good looking liveries because there's no way to make them with that type of setup. It's, it's very antiquated and it looks like an afterthought. It looks like something that, that somebody took a look at and said, oh shit, we promised them a livery editor. Oh, well, slap something together. And the scenario editor, uh, I'm not really into that, but from everything that I've read about it, the scenario editor is equally lacking and there's really not a lot you can do with it. So, okay. And, and the excuse that I saw for that was, well, people that play Train Sim, they create the scenarios in their head. Uh, okay, well that's don't include a scenario editor. Don't include a half-assed scenario editor. If, if your excuse is, I'm just going to make up scenarios in my head anyway. Let me make them up in my head and, and don't insult me. So really disappointed with that. But those are two things that I wasn't... That, that didn't mean a whole lot to me. This is one of those talent loco sets. There we go. And I believe that's real similar to the one that is on Rapid Transit. Oh, that's something else as well. I guess you can now put any loco into any route. And... Uh, that's cool, I guess. I don't know if that really does much for you if you can't create detailed scenarios, but eh, whatever. That's it's something. That's a thing. So, uh, so I, that's uh, is that is that all the bad stuff? Did we get all the bad stuff out of the way? Yeah, I mean, it's here's the thing about Flight Sim and TSW two. I'm really disappointed in both of them. And I'm having a lot of fun in both of them, and I'm glad I got both of them. And I know some of that comes down to, to our attitude and our expectations as gamers. You know, that we need, to be, we need to be realistic in our expectations. We need to give developers a little bit of latitude. We need to understand that we, we sort of push for these games to be released. And a lot of times when they're released, they're not quite done yet. But developers get a tremendous amount of feedback when they make us their paid beta testers. And it, it's us doing the paying. It's not us getting paid. We pay to be beta testers. But developers get a ton of information about how to, how to fix and finish their game. And the good ones do. And they incorporate that stuff. And, uh, and so we, we demand that these games be, be released as soon as possible can't wait and then we pick them apart when they're not perfect on day one so I'm somewhere in the middle I, I am a little disappointed and I mean there's some things about flight sim that are just it's just mind-blowing to me I, I got the basic edition I got the $60 game if you get the upgrades you get additional aircraft and you get additional airports right the hand-built really good-looking airports well I got the $60 version because I wasn't sure what to expect and I also didn't know if it would run well on my machine. Well, it does run well. And I thought, okay, cool. Let's upgrade. Let's get some additional aircraft. Let's get some additional airports. Oh, shit. 
Hang on. Slow down just a little bit here. It's, yeah, this thing, it's, it's gonna sound ridiculous because it's a bullet train. But it goes very fast, very, very fast. All right. So here's the, here's the punchline. You can't upgrade. If you own Flight Simulator, you can't upgrade, or at least I haven't found a way to upgrade. I went to the store in game and said, I'll take that one, right? The, the other one. And it processed for a while and then it just did nothing. Uh, all right. So I went to Steam and I selected the other one, right? The $90 one. And it said, no, no, you, you already own the game. So apparently there's, there's some, some error has been made somewhere where you cannot, at the moment, you cannot upgrade. And that's a, that's a pretty big error for a company to make because what that means essentially is I have money. I got my debit card in my hand. I want to give you money and I can't. And I mean, really the whole point of a business is that you just give them money. That's what they do, that's what they're for. So if you're the kind of business that people can't give money to, you see what I'm getting at? There's, there's a problem. There's a huge problem there. So mistakes like that, you know, things that slip through or things like, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the systems and avionics and navigation stuff is broken or missing and they know it, right? Like the developers say on, on the discussions. Yeah, we know it's a known bug. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Is it? It's a known bug. So, it is, I believe these things will be fixed. Now, I think Flight Simulator has a much longer projected lifespan. People are saying five to seven years. I think it's got a much longer projected lifespan than Train Sim World, particularly when Train Sim World, Train Sim World 2, they're now making the same promises that they made for Train Sim World 2020. And if you don't know how that went, right? Game was released. People, when I say people, I mean me. <laughs> People spent several hundred dollars on DLC and then they abandon it. And now they've released Train Sim World 2 and they're essentially saying, well, we wouldn't do that. Right. Anecdotally, sidebar, tangent. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a, a, an in real life sort of kerfuffle. I'm watching my speed limit very carefully here because we're getting, getting into town. And uh, I paid a deposit with somebody and then they did something. Uh, nothing really drastic, right? Nothing catastrophic, but enough that I said, nah, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do business with you. We're done. We're done. So I called and asked for a refund, and they said they'd start processing it. And a couple of days later, the regional manager called me, and they apologized, and we talked a little bit. And, you know, they thanked me for the feedback and the criticism, all the things that you're supposed to say. And they were doing really, really good. Props to them. They were doing really good, but they blew it at the end. Just as we were about to end the call, this person said, I just wanted to call and apologize and let you know that's not who we are and that's not what we do. And I laughed out loud. I, I actually, I literally laughed out loud and said to them, you insult me. You're, you're being silly right now. What you're saying is that thing we did, that thing we just did, we don't do that. That's not who we are. That's not what we do. You just did it come on now and then that was the end of the call so what dovetail is saying is the thing that we just did with tsw 2020 we're not going to do that with tsw2 and nobody believes them so we'll see how it goes but i don't i don't anticipate this game being around and and being worked on and improved for five years or seven years it would not surprise me at all if they put out six or eight or ten dlc this year at 20 or 30 bucks a piece and then this time next year, they announce TSW3, and some of your DLC will port over, and you know what I mean? It's going to be all new. We're, we're going to Unreal 5, and everything is going to be great, and oh, by the way, TSW2 is now Abandonware, and yeah. So, I mean, it's on us as consumers. I One of the reasons that I did not want to buy this is I did not want to reward bad behavior, and then I did, and a lot of other people did as well. So Dovetail took in, I don't know, probably millions of dollars today from sales of, of this game, this sim. Who doesn't like millions of dollars, right? And depending on what their, you know, how their business is structured, that may have already put them into profit. It's not likely. 
you got to you got to do a little better than that before you're you're making money. You can take in revenue, but revenue and profit, two different things. But it could be, you know, that this this game is already in the black, and the joke is on us. So if I had to if I had to give you a a red light, green light. If you asked me, you know, should I buy this game? Uh, I would say uh, the same as Flight Sim. I would say sure, go ahead. But be aware of, of what you're getting into. You know, it's not. Uh, I'm trying to think of games this year that have really impressed me. Snow Runner, uh, I felt was really, really good. And I didn't see a lot of, of bugs in that game, I didn't see a lot of flaws with it, but apparently some people did. They felt the game was really flawed in a lot of ways, and, and they had problems with it. I didn't have any problems with it, so apparently I got really lucky. I'm not saying those people didn't have problems. I'm not suggesting they're, like, making it up or anything. But I didn't have any problems. I, I felt really good about the game. And I think that's... Uh, I mean, MotoGP 20, I've been playing that a lot. It took me a while to come around to that uh, and, and really get used to uh, the differences and... and being part of a team and running the other team. So there, there's some improvements that were made there that, that make the game more fun. Uh, F1 2020, F120, yeah. I mean, from day one, I was, I was pretty much into that. I think my team really changes the game, so I was impressed with that. But, I mean, they're all franchise titles. Monster Energy Supercross 3, franchise title. I've seen a lot of people on the TSW forum, on the TF TSW threads, I've seen a lot of people talking about FIFA. And some people talking about Madden. I think FIFA is, is more popular than Madden just because soccer. Footy is, is played more places, but certainly the NFL is a big deal in the U.S. And so Madden has been kind of a, kind of a topic along with FIFA. And the, I guess the pushback from people white knighting Dovetail, what they're, what they're saying is, well, it's no different than what EA Sports does with FIFA every year. And with Madden every year, and I, I think the, I don't know the the argument. I don't like to use that word, but, but, from my perspective, the difference is that you know that going in, right? You sort of know what to expect from, from EA Sports, and what they're going to do, and they do freshen up the game a little bit. There's no real profound changes from year to year. Every maybe every five or six years. They'll really kind of, kind of up the game. But for the most part, it's just new pajamas every year. But we know that, you know, we know that going in, and so it's not a disappointment and it's not a frustration. And what happened with with this sim, and uh, and some of the others that I bought this year, it, it's I don't know. It's a lot of promises. It's a lot of hype, right? Deep machine learning AI. Yeah, all right. Uh, it doesn't seem like it from here, but you know what? It's ultimately it's just pixels. It's just a hobby, so it's nothing to get terribly fired up about. And I'm not. I am. Uh, I, I I knew I was going to be disappointed at least by TSW2. I knew I was going to be disappointed, and I was a little bit. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I wasn't quite so sure what to expect, and uh, maybe because my expectations were lower, or because my expectations were different, I would have to say I'm not as disappointed with that it's less than perfect but I wasn't expecting it to be and uh, with TSW 2 yeah well if anything even more so I really was not expecting very much and I wasn't disappointed I wasn't disappointed in my disappointment so ultimately I would say yeah they're both worth owning they would both really be worth owning if you got them on sale uh, if uh, I don't know how much this is new. I want to say 30, 15, 10 or 15, some, some big super sale. That would be a smoking deal. And I would definitely recommend that. Day one, 30 bucks, man, eh, you know, it's up to you. Depends on what you're into. And the thing that strikes me about both these games, and we are, wow, we might do really, really good on time as far as 30 minutes. The thing that strikes me about both these games is how much of both of them seems to be sort of uh, pointing in the direction of console gamers. I'm going to speed up a little bit here. we got a ways to go. I wonder, I do wonder, with the new consoles coming out and the things that the new consoles are going to be capable of, I really do wonder if 
a certain type of gaming that was really sort of, uh, I don't want to say off limits, but there, there, not a ton of simulation gaming for console. I feel like sim developers, sim game developers are looking more to that crowd now, looking more to that audience and seeing some potential there. The fact that there is controller support for both of these is, uh, to me, that's kind of an indicative of, of them wanting that console crowd. And good on them. You know, I, I personally, I like games that are accessible, and I like when developers do include the ability to use a gamepad and, and just, I don't know, make, make games fun for everybody. But do try to find a way to keep things realistic or keep things sort of, uh, I hate the word hardcore because it, it always just smacks of elitism to me, but I don't know. Try to, try to set things up in a way that everybody can, can like your game and everybody can have fun with it. And we're still, and we're about five miles out. And I don't see a speed limit drop in the next little bit here. So let's pick up the pace just a bit. We might even be on time. That happens every now and then. But I suspect as we pass this signal, we will get our new speed limit. No, maybe not. So yeah, it's been it's been an interesting <laughs> it's been an interesting sim gaming week. It really has. And I've been away from the trucks. I've been away from the farm. And it'll be nice to now that this stuff is sort of cleared off the calendar. It'll be nice to step back into those those other sims that are. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't want to say they're done. Well, particularly on the farm sim side, 19, we all know how that went. But truck sim and, and farm sim in its own way, those are, I would describe those as sort of fully realized sims. You know, they're, they're not trying to figure out what they are or, or, or where they're going. Eh, at least truck sim isn't. So, yep. But as I said earlier, ultimately it is just a hobby just pixels nothing to worry about all right 27 minutes three miles we're we gonna make it maybe maybe you know something that I was realizing about high-speed routes and I, I, I thought about this as we were leaving Cologne and I did want to mention it being back in a flight sim is it's interesting that there's a lot that happens sort of at the beginning of a session. And once you get in the air, you don't really do a whole lot for 45 minutes or an hour, two hours, whatever. And then a lot happens at the end. And I think for high-speed rail, it's maybe kind of a similar setup where the idea of you know doing a lot to get out of a yard, having a lot of problems to overcome, right? Challenges. And then once you get out on the, the middle part of the route, then you're up to, you know, 300 kilometers an hour, whatever. And then at the other end, the same thing. Because the, it's, it's an express route, right? You don't stop. So when I look at it, I'm glad that they included that talent loco on this route as well, because the idea that all you do is leave the station, sort of max out the throttle, and then half an hour later, you slow down and pull into the station. I, I like the idea of having a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, not stuff to do, eh, sort of stuff to do. You know what I mean. But I get it when people say that shunting and yard activities is actually the most that you can do in a train sim. Because other than that, really, you just get in the train and you don't have to steer it. You just work the brakes and throttle and, and that's it. And on a high-speed train, you do even less because there's just that much less to do. Uh, no stops, right? You just going very very fast so other than making the route this route is 64 kilometers long which I want to say is about twice the length of most routes let's get slowed down here other than making it even longer right make it 120 kilometers 150 kilometers whatever but you still wouldn't be doing anything you would still just be just be uh, monitoring the speed and, and more or less going very fast so Hopefully there'll be some timetable activities and scenario activities with a lot going on at either end. That would really, hang on, Let's see what we got here, 70, okay. 
that would really uh, it would really be something that I would enjoy and it it does sort of as a concept it does remind me of flight sim where like I said you get that long period of boredom in the middle but it's bookended by periods of very intense activity all right so we are pulling into is it Aachen let's say it's Aachen and we've got a 40 mile an hour coming up so I'm just gonna even though we're in a 70 I'm just gonna keep slowing down and we got about half a mile to go this is perfect I love it when the timing works out all right and the 40 will be will be more or less getting into the station so I think we can coast in there yep I, I do like train sims I wish there were more I wish they were better I've heard some people say that a Sobo the company that developed flight simulator for Microsoft Microsoft paid a Sobo to build it I've heard people say it would be very cool if Microsoft got their train simulator going as well because Microsoft train simulator one was that that was years ago but they used to have a train sim as well It'd be nice if they got a train sim going and just blew dovetail out of the water and there's <laughs> There's two problems with it. One problem is, I don't know if Sobo is up to it. And the other is, uh, I mean, Flight Sim is, is not perfect. So thinking that a Sobo is going to make something that is sort of as perfect as, as we want Train Sim to be when they couldn't pull off Flight Sim. Well, I mean, does that make sense? I think it does. All right, let me slow down a little bit more here because we're in the station and we're still we're not going fast but we're going a little faster than I want to be so we'll get this slowed down we'll open the doors we'll get these good people out and we'll call it and there you have it I'm counting it down by the way concentrating I'm looking at my little yard marker up in the corner there and I think our stop point is this white sign right up here I think it might be all right is that it right there fairly close 15 feet could be worse all right let's get the doors open we'll hop outside doors are open go right out here We'll call it right there. There you have it. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for our first episode of Train Sim World 2. We'll see you next time. Take care now.